In this video, we'll delve deeper into the properties of acids and bases. More specifically, we'll talk about the difference between a strong and a weak acid or base. We will also discuss the concept of amphiprotic and amphoteric species. Finally, we'll talk about how acids and bases can react together in neutralization reactions. We know that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors based upon the bronsted lowry definition of acids and bases. We also know from previous studies that we can describe the extent to which a reaction proceeds with the equilibrium constant and equilibrium expression. We can now apply these concepts to acids and bases to understand the concept of strong acids versus weak acids and strong bases versus weak bases. Another way of describing the strength of an acid or base is understanding the degree to which the acid or base ionizes or dissociates to produce hydronium or hydroxide ions respectively. As we just mentioned, we can quantify the degree of dissociation of acids and bases into their ions with their dissociation constants. For acids, this is the Ka, and for bases, this is the Kb. In a general equilibrium reaction of an acid in water, which dissociates into a hydronium ion and a conjugate base, the Ka is defined by the following equation. The Ka is equal to the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid, all at equilibrium. And similarly for Kb, in a general equilibrium reaction of a base in water which dissociates into a conjugate acid and a hydroxide ion, the Kb is defined by this equation. The Kb is the concentration of the conjugate acid times the concentration of hydroxide ions divided by the concentration of the base, all at equilibrium. Just like for pH and pOH, we can take the negative log of the Ka and Kb to get pKa and pKb, respectively. This is useful sometimes in case our Ka's or Kb's are really big or small numbers. Let's first talk about strong acids and bases. These are substances that will ionize or dissociate nearly completely, thereby producing larger concentrations of hydronium or hydroxide ions. Strong acids fully dissociate into a hydronium ion and a conjugate base. The Ka values, where Ka is the equilibrium constant for acids, are very large, meaning that they nearly completely ionize and produce a concentration of hydronium ion that can be assumed to be equal to the acid concentration. Here are some common examples of strong acids, and notice how all these equations are shown with a one-way arrow, which indicate that these reactions go primarily to completion, and at equilibrium, there is much more product than reactant. This is also shown by the large Ka values. Just like strong acids, strong bases are compounds that also fully dissociate into ions, this time a hydroxide ion and a conjugate acid. Some common strong bases are the group 1 hydroxides. They are very soluble if a solution is not saturated, and the hydroxide will completely dissociate in water to produce the hydroxide ion. These equations are also shown with one-way arrows, indicating that the group 1 hydroxides will completely dissociate and all hydroxide will go into solution. Because there is a full extent of dissociation, we get many hydroxide ions in solution, and therefore our value for Kb becomes very high. Now let's contrast a few weak acids and a few weak bases. Weak acids only dissociate partially into their constituent ions. Hence, the Ka values for weak acids are less than 1, indicating that the equilibrium position for the ionization of the weak acid contains reactant in a significant amount. 
Therefore, much less hydronium ion is generated by a weak acid compared to a strong acid. The ionization equations are shown with two-way arrows indicating that both reactant and product are present at equilibrium. And similarly, weak bases also only partially dissociate into their constituent ions. The Kb values, Kb is the equilibrium constant for bases, of weak bases are also less than 1, and so just like weak acids, the equilibrium position contains significant amounts of reactant, and therefore much less hydroxide ion is generated. The base ionization equation for weak bases is also shown with a two-way arrow, indicating that both reactant and product are present at equilibrium. Let's also take a second now to see how Ka and Kb relate to the strength of acids and bases. Since in the Ka and Kb expressions, we have the concentrations of the dissociated ions in the numerator, a high Ka or Kb indicates a strong acid or base, respectively. And because pKa and pKb are the negative logs of the Kb and Kb respectively, the trend with pKa and pKb is the opposite. A strong acid or base will have a small pKa or pKb, and a weak acid or base will have a high pKa or pKb, respectively. And what other comparisons can we make between a strong acid or base or a weak acid or base? Well, if we compare a strong and a weak acid of equal concentration, the strong acid will have a lower pH, will be more electrically conductive due to more ions in solution, and will undergo acidic reactions at a higher rate than weak acids. This is again because there would be more hydronium ions in solution due to the full dissociation of strong acids. The same can be said when comparing strong bases to weak bases, but with hydroxide ions in solution instead. For the next part of this video, we'll discuss the topic of amphiprotic and amphoteric species. As we have seen with the auto-ionization of water, the water molecule can act as a proton donor or an acid, but it can also act as a proton acceptor or a base, chemical species that can act as both a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base are called amphiprotic. Another amphiprotic species is the hydrogen phosphate ion HPO4-2-. Equations can be written that show hydrogen phosphate can both donate and accept a proton. Amphiprotic species will tend to be weak acids or weak bases. We should also note here that amphiprotic species are just a subset of a larger group of amphoteric species, those substances that can react with both acids and bases. In examining the periodic table trends of the oxides in period 3, the basic metal oxides will form bases in water. For example, sodium oxides react with water to form sodium hydroxide, a strong base. As we'll see, a strong base can react with an acid in a neutralization reaction. However, the base will not react with another base. We'll take a look at neutralization reactions in more detail very shortly. Conversely, nonmetal oxides on the right of period 3 form acids in water. Sulfur dioxide reacts with water to form sulfurous acid, a strong acid. Just as acids neutralize bases, an acid will likewise be neutralized by a base, but the acid formed will not react with another acid. However, if we look to the center of period 3, aluminum oxide does not react readily to form an acid or a base in water, but the oxide itself can react with either an acid or a base. Therefore, aluminum oxide is considered amphoteric. However, it's not amphiprotic as it is incapable of donating or accepting a proton. We just now briefly mentioned this but acids and bases react to neutralize one another. 
In a classical neutralization reaction, the hydrogen ion from the acid reacts with the hydroxide ion to form water and a salt. This is the case in the following reactions. In this first reaction, nitric oxide reacts with potassium hydroxide to form water and a salt, potassium nitrate. Hopefully you can see how the salt is made up of the red ions from the acid and base, and the water molecule is made up of the hydrogen and hydroxide ions, again from the acid and the base. The second reaction between sulfurous acid and lithium hydroxide is similar. Again, a salt and water molecules are formed, but the equation and the ionic compound charges have to be balanced here like in any other chemical reaction. There are many other neutralization reactions, but one we just mentioned is the reaction of a metallic oxide with an acid. We just mentioned that metallic oxides such as magnesium oxide, rubidium oxide, or even nickel oxide will form bases in aqueous solutions. Let's take a look at two of these reactions. Here we have rubidium oxide reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce again a water molecule and a salt. Notice how the salt is made up of these ions from the oxide and acid. Very similarly, nickel oxide can react with hydrogen iodide to also form water and a resulting salt, as shown here. One final type of acid-based neutralization reaction involves the carbonate ion and the hydrogen carbonate ion. Overall, the reactions of carbonates with acids play a vital role in the Earth's natural processes, including the carbon cycle, geology, climate regulation, the health of aquatic ecosystems, and even our own biology. Therefore, understanding these reactions and their implications is essential for scientists and policymakers to make informed decisions regarding the conservation and management of natural resources as well as for understanding our health and well-being. Here are just a few examples. Acid rain can break down limestone-containing structures, as well as inhibit shell formation in animals such as mollusks. In this reaction, the amount of limestone is reduced as nitric acid from acid rain neutralizes the limestone in the mollusks or structures, which creates water, carbon dioxide, and a salt. An example of a reaction involving hydrogen carbonate is this one here. The reaction of an acid, in this case hydrochloric acid, with sodium hydrogen carbonate, also known as sodium bicarbonate. The products of this reaction are also water, carbon dioxide, and a salt. Notice that in both of these reactions, carbon dioxide is a product. And that's it for this video on acid-base properties. In this video, we learned that strong acids and bases dissociate fully into their constituent ions. In contrast, weak acids and bases only partially dissociate into their constituent ions. We also learned that amphiprotic species are species that can both donate or accept a proton, while amphoteric species are species which can react with both acids and bases. Finally, we learned that acids and bases react together in various types of neutralization reactions.